here on the west side of the house, the west side of the structure, next to the swimming pool equipment, which we'll talk about later. This is about the condensing units and in related air conditioning things. I'll get to that in just a moment. Well, I have no time like the present. Okay, this dot, this little rusty dot right here, that is presumed to be your secondary drain line, your emergency drain line for the air conditioning system. Obviously, we had rusty water coming through here, but you also notice that the pipe does not extend through the soffit. Then we come over here, we get some water damage on the soffit. Is that water damage related to the rusty water damage? Is it related to that water damage? Is that what's going on? I don't know. We'll try and find out. Inquiring minds want to know. It's supposed to discharge over a window. This is your home inspector. It's supposed to discharge over a window so that when you look out the window, you see that you got a problem. And then we have this big rusty stain here where we've had a problem. Okay, this little unit over here, I say little because it's the smaller of the two. It's two and a half tons. I'm estimated to be six years old. Okay, this equipment, air conditioning equipment, it's engineered on paper, the bearings are spec and the races and all those kinds of things. But it's engineered to last about 20 years. Las Vegas is going to give you 14. About 14 years it's done about everything you would expect it to do. But this unit is about six years old, so it's almost half its estimated age. I had one that lasted 35. They don't have to give it up at 14, they don't have to give it up at 20. The refrigerant in this unit is R410A, which is a good, which is a good refrigerant. And being six years old, it's probably a SEER 14. Well, I'm gonna look that up a little more. So what's wrong with it? Okay, well let's let's go there. Let's go with what's wrong with it. The electric service disconnect is located behind it. It should not be located behind it, it should be located beside it. It should have the top and side sealed to help moisture from getting in behind it. This is the dead front for it. I removed it for observations. It'll go back on. What else is wrong with it? Well, this, and so when was it installed? When was it installed? 2013. This wasn't required when it was installed, but it's an energy consideration. But this phone, is no longer allowed. See how spongy it is? See how it gets torn up and stuff? It's supposed to be a rigid foam that goes to it. A rigid insulation on your low pressure refrigerant lines. And then your Schrader valve caps. Look that up in the dictionary. You won't find Schrader caps in there very often. <laughs> but the refrigerant service port caps, they should be anti-theft. Anti-theft caps. And uh, that's by today's standards. And when this unit, again, when this unit was installed, that wasn't required. I'm going to call it a deficiency because it has to do with energy, it has to do with safety. So, and the coils are dirty. The coils are very dirty. And we can see the um, data plate here. I've got a still image of that. So you'll get that. And the hole in the wall should be better sealed you know, for moisture and energy. And energy. So there we go. Now I'm going to move on along to the swim pool area, go to the back of the house talk about stuff. That's what we do. This is the electric meter to the house. We'll talk about that in a moment. We'll talk about that in a moment. I wanted to come in here. Inquiry minds want to know. <clears throat> that unit but we don't know what that unit is. It's not labeled. It's not labeled. So we got two 20s. And it's supposed to take a 25 amp breaker. We got anything that's close to that? I didn't mean to yank you around like this. I really didn't. That's 40. That's 60. 30. Okay. Well, we got a 20 here. Maybe. We got a 30. Okay. We got a 50. It's possible that it was fused correctly. Now the other one is fused for 60. We're going there. We are going there. And I don't see it. It says 40 to 60. The manufacturers usually like them to be at the top. And by the way, this is supposed to be labeled. 
It's not supposed to be handwritten in the manufacturer's specification notice is missing. So this panel is basically it's obsolete. Basically it's obsolete. Um, can an electrician come in here without the label? Sure he can. Sure he can. Um, but we're going to delve deeper into this later. This is really about the condensing units, right? It's supposed to be. This is the gas meter. I can't really see where it goes into the house, so it goes into the house from this side somewhere, under the ground. The pot is high enough off of the ground. And this is how you would turn the power, this is how you turn the gas off to the, to the if you had a gas problem. Now see the way, see where this valve is? Okay. If it's perpendicular, if it's parallel, excuse me, if it's parallel, the gas is on. If it's perpendicular, the gas is off. And then um, this vent cap, like the neighbor's vent cap over here, the vent cap is missing. Actually kind of just broke off. But I promised you something else, right? Coming along, I still don't see the secondary drain line for this side. If I find it, I'll find it. This is the other side. This is the east side condensing unit. It's a larger condensing unit. Um, most manufacturers want the condensing units to be at least 12 inches away from the wall so that they can circulate well. Also, the foundation pads should elevate the condensing units at least three inches above the ground, and that's, that's not happening here. Like the other one, we used to have the wrong kind of foam, and this is a good example of why we do not have the Schrader valve caps, the anti-theft Schrader valve caps. And this is the data plate, like the other one. The coils don't seem to, I can call them dirty, but they're not, not as dirty as the other one. So what about this unit? Well, let's talk, all right? Well, this unit is a five-ton system, all right? And it may or may not be fused properly, we don't know that yet, but it's 17 years old. Remember what I said? Engineered on paper to last 20, most of them last about 14. This unit's done just about everything you would expect it to do for you. And by it being 17 years old in 2004, it's probably, it's probably a SEER 13 instead of a SEER 14 like the other side. And again, give me a chance to do some homework. And, um, and I will. I will do some homework. Uh, another thing that's interesting about this unit is its R22 refrigerant. The other one is R410. R22, it's no longer manufactured in the United States, no longer allowed to be legally imported into the United States. Yes, there is a stockpile of it. Yes, you can get it. Yes, it's expensive. They also sell drop-ins, alternative refrigerants that work with the old R22 systems, and they are between 10 and 30 percent less efficient than this already inefficient system is. And if you have somebody encourage you to put a drop-in in here, you might as well marry the guy because nobody's going to want to follow it. The moral of the story is just about any technician that comes over here to service this equipment is going to rightfully encourage you to update it. It may be operating fine. I don't know that yet. And if it gets warm enough, we'll find more out about that. But it's an obsolete system. It's R22. Any technician that comes over here say, Bud, the technician was just over here and uh, he says we need to update the system. I'm going like, yeah, probably. And you go like, why didn't you tell me that? And I said, I didn't have to. Well, I don't want that to be my best answer. Sometimes it is. I don't know. I never like that. That's not a good answer. I'm not, I never feel comfortable about that. So I'm telling you, this is an R22 system. Now, according to the Texas Real Estate Commission, it's either on or off. It works the way it should or it doesn't work the way it should. It wasn't installed properly. Or it's a safety issue. So the pushback you're likely to get on this is, is it working? Well, yeah, it's working, but I'm about to have to buy a new one. You know, I mean, that's the pushback you're going to get. I can't, I can't condemn this unit. I can't call. I'm going to tell you that it's R22 system, but I can't call it a deficiency. It'll be up in the information section of the report. And it'll be there, it'll be there in bold, I'll probably highlight it, I'll tell you all about it. But the fact that it's R22, I cannot actually call it a deficiency. I'm warning you that you're about to pick up the tab on replacing this. I'm warning you that every service technician that comes out here is going to encourage you to replace it. Just know that and beware. Okay, the electric disconnect, unlike the other one, it's on the other side of the, it's away from it. 
That's nice. To a point. Nice to a point. But look in here. Is it corrosion on these points? Look at here. This is heating up. We probably got too small of a breaker, huh? Actually, that would be too large of a breaker. Anyway, something's happening. Maybe it's not the size of the breaker at all. But we've had some overload heat situations over here that oxidize these things and, and scorch the wires. Um, further evaluation by an air conditioning guy or an electrician is highly recommended. And then I'm going to put the caps back on now.